if you can't admit the truth, then you can't be helped. If you can't admit the truth, then you can't be helped. I want to give a great shout out to everybody. You all know who you are as we thank the Lord for being able to come back once again. And giving a great shout out to you, Terry. Got your email. That's why I want to title this video. If you can't admit the truth, then you can't be helped. A lot of people know what's wrong with them, whatever their problem is, but they have got to the point where they don't want to admit the truth. So it's easier to point fingers that way and that way than to point it itself because I don't want to tell the truth on myself. That's what one of the problems with the Pharisees was also in the Bible. And you cannot be helped until you admit the truth. This is why God can't work on some people, because they won't allow God to. They steady lying to themselves. You know, when we talk about this walk of salvation, brother, now I can only speak for myself, because I keep it real when I talk in these videos. In this walk of salvation, how many of y'all ever done, done something wrong while you supposed to be so saved? How many of y'all have ever been attracted to a sinful woman, fellas? Uh, women, how many of y'all have been attracted to a sinful man, a sinful person, having sinful ways when we all were sinners? How many of y'all ever been down that road? See, some of y'all ain't going to say amen because you so sanctified and, and, and holy and filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me say it like that if I may. See, when I think about this walk, walking for Christ, it ain't easy. But then the Lord never told me it was easy. And then he also told me I wasn't going to understand everything. So when you think about this walk, now some of us got some friends that really, they ain't all that bad. They just don't go to church. And some of them live more according to the word than the ones that go to church. They wasn't saved, so they was a sinner according to you. <laughs> Let me put it to you like this. Saints, they cuss. Mm. Preachers, they cuss. Deacons, they show enough cuss. Minister of music, church folk, religious folks, they cuss. See, I don't know about y'all, but when I was in my life of sin, I was a good sinner. And I did it well, and I loved it. I didn't have no problem getting drunk when I wanted to get drunk. I didn't have a problem cussing out somebody when I wanted to cuss them out. When I did what I did, I did it well. And if I was going to sleep with a woman, I was going to sleep with that woman the best way I could. Because I was in that life. Thought I was doing a lot of wrong, a lot of right things, knowing that I was wrong. And then when I found out what I was doing was wrong, I still wanted to do wrong in so many ways. Because I was dealing with this flesh, which I still am, and this flesh, and how bad this flesh want to do wrong. And when I want to do right, I keep doing wrong, but at the same time, I know how to do right but I wind up doing wrong anyway. Somebody will catch that. I was a good sinner. You was a good sinner. But now we got this thing about I'm so sanctified. That ain't me, JT. I go to church every Sunday and I don't, I don't do people wrong. I don't do this, I don't do that. And some of these folks ain't nothing but sanctified hoes, sanctified drunks, sanctified players and pimps, sanctified drug users, sanctified so on, so on, et cetera, et cetera. So many people looking down on the sinners when they are a sinner they self. If you can't admit the truth, then you can't be helped. Mm. You cannot be helped if you can't admit the simple fact that I can't fight with this sin. And I got it. something wrong with me. You know what I used to say? There's something wrong with me. I can't tell you how many times I went in that mirror and looked at self and just said, I, I hate what I was looking at. Not so much in the fact that I hated myself, but I hated my ways. And I had to do something about it. See, if you're going to preach, you got to preach to self first, people. You got to admit what's wrong with you. This is why most people that's in their life of sin are comfortable in their life of sin because they don't want to admit that they got a problem. And they know deep in the back of their mind that they are doing wrong. I'm so tired of preachers sitting up here lying saying, oh, it's easy. Just follow the Lord. You ain't going to have too much to worry about. You ain't going to suffer. 
that you know you got to live like this and the, the the bible is this you read this scripture and you're gonna have a peace of mind and this and that they preach this and preach that man get real preacher you're gonna have problems in this life good god almighty i don't care who you are stop sugarcoating the word to folks you're going to struggle with this flesh. And any preacher telling you you ain't struggling with your flesh, that is a lying preacher. You're going to struggle with this flesh. I don't care who you are, bishop, on down. That's why I want to use the word sanctified. I'm so saved. And how many of y'all fellas ever dated a, when you were so-called calling yourself so all in the church now, men, I'm talking to the men now, and you thought you were so strong in the Lord, and you was attracted by that sinful woman, when you were still sinful yourself, you saw that fine body, you looked at that woman, and you said, I'm going to get that woman, and then some of us got the nerve to try to make them our wives, try to make them be a part of ministry, just because she look good, she fine, she got a big booty, she dressed nice, she she looked like a type of woman you supposed to be with. But yet and still, you wind up falling down. Hmm. Let me tell you something about me. I won't reveal this woman's name, but this woman was very special to me. Because she reminded me when I started falling off in my life of sin. She reminded old JT, you need to get back on track. You, you done fell off a little bit. And this, this, she's supposed to have been the sinful woman in my eyes. But we both were sinners. We both were sleeping with each other. We both. But thing about it, she knew what she was doing. And she knew where she was at. But she said, I ain't sleeping with you no more, boy. She said, you supposed to be about God business. You know what happened? The sinner checked me. Hmm. Somebody catch that later on. She preached back to me when I wanted to do wrong. Oh. See, we got an old saying down here, me and my neighbor. We used to talk so much, and I miss him, Lord, rest his soul. See, we want to sit here and act like we so sanctified. That's why I say you a sanctified hoe. You a sanctified drunk. You a sanctified player. You a sanctified all that stuff you want to call that you ain't doing that you know you're doing. You can't be talking about that you sanctified and holy and, and all this. You be ye holy, and I'm holy, and you living a hoish life. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you ain't got to look at this video. I'm going to keep it real. That's why we got so many pimp preachers now using the house of God, using the chick, using the people in the building, the pimp. You a sanctified pimp, preacher. See, we got to keep it real when we tell the word of God and then tell what's wrong with us. I lived my life for sin. I done did all the shacking up I was going to do. I done learned when I was young and dumb and full of calm. I did all that stupid, foolish stuff. But once I start living, uh-oh, here we go. That's why I be telling people, you got to live this word. See, what good is it, it, it going to do me to get on here and talk about God and I can't live it? I'm sitting there telling y'all one thing in the video, and then I turn around and do the other. See, I check myself. I feel myself talking to myself all the time. And I, I'm like you, P.P. Jones. I find myself checking myself every day. I realized that my biggest problem was myself. And I ain't got time to point fingers. See, if we could tell the truth about ourselves, we could really be helped. God is waiting on us to just confess. And he already know what's wrong with us anyway. But why do we think we hide from God? I'm a fool if I sit here and act like I don't go through nothing. I don't be tempted. I don't want to go out and do this. I don't want to do that. I'll be a lying fool. Yeah, I have them thoughts. JT, what you talking about? I'm having those thoughts. Oh, she fine. I, oh, look at her. I'd be a lying fool if I didn't say that I was looking at that woman and looking at her body and saying, and I, and I wasn't imagining in my mind that, oh, I could do something with her. See, I keep it real. It's a fight every day JT wake up. Being in this music business, mm, being around women all the time, it's hard, ain't it, fellas? See, somebody going to feel me but when they, especially when you are a single man in ministry trying to live for God and you got all these type of women coming up against you, married and not married. 
and they don't care if they are married. It, it's a it's so much respect laws now that these a lot of these women, not everybody, but a lot of women nowadays in the church don't care if you married or not. They come up to you in your face in front of your wife, whether you single or married, they don't care. Some of these women putting on these short skirts just to come to church and get at some of these men, trying to get at the preacher, trying to get at the musician. And we have to be very careful with what we say, fellas. Because if you let off just a little bit of conversation, and then that famous word, what you doing tonight, let's go out to eat, you got to be very careful. Some of y'all going out to eat and going out to eat. Somebody will catch that later on. This walk of salvation ain't no joke. Anybody ever been attracted to a sinful person? Let me throw up both of my hands. Why? Because a sinner knows a sinner. Mm. A sinner knows a sinner. A sinner can tell about a look on a woman or a man's face where they going with the look. Them eyes. The Bible speaks of those, those haughty eyes. You, you can see eyes roaming all around the church house and you wonder why, why so many people are being busted now. If you're, going, if you're going to get help, you got to admit the truth about yourself. Everybody running to the counselors and the, and the TV shows and all these things trying to get help, and they ain't running to God. That's the only one going to bring you out. So you got to admit what's wrong with you. Most people ain't going to do that. If you ever get a chance to sit down in the room with me, and talk to me one on one like me and K Ray do, me and so many people do. You will hear me, you will hear me keep it so real. Just like I do on these videos. But some things I won't put in these videos just cause. Cause I'm so many ways, I'm like a private person in so many ways. I don't allow a lot of folks in my business. But I do tell certain people what I want them to know. We gotta keep it real, people. If you if you ever gonna get help, then you gotta admit the truth on what's wrong with you. You cannot be helped until you admit the truth. God bless you and God keep you.